So you know it's a pressing matter actually. I have to make all these objects manually. And that's both tedious and difficult. So let's see if I can import a model from something like 3D Paint. If you click the 3D view, you can see that this is a prism. And one prism is seemingly the simplest thing I can draw on 3D Paint. So let's go save that. And I'm going to save it as a 3MF. So as it turns out, a 3MF file is basically just a zip file. So if you have 7-zip, you can just go and click Extract here. And you've now turned this file into a folder, which we can view the contents of. It's actually quite simple in here. You can go into the 3D folder and you can see that it has a model file. And if you open that up, you can see that everything is actually written in XML. There are really two main parts of this model. You've got the vertices, which are basically just the eight points around this prism. And then you've got the triangles. And there are 12 of them because each face is made up of two triangles and there are six faces total. Each triangle is made up of three vertices, and these numbers are defined to the vertices up here. So zero, one, two. So this isn't that hard to interpret, at least not for this simplistic material. We can probably make something that will be able to read and interpret these files. And I'm gonna start from a new blank text file for interpreting this. This line right here is pretty simple user input, so when the user clicks choose file, they click prism.model, then the on change function kicks in, and right now it's just printing a one to the console. So if I give the load model function this.files, you can actually see the file in here. Well, it has information about the file, but the file itself is actually in a blob. This is perhaps the simplest way to read that XML file. You create a file reader object, then when that reader loads, it creates a DOM parser, and then that parser will parse the file contents, which we print to the console. And then we give the reader our file. How do I know how to do this? I looked it up on Stack Overflow. Anyway, so you click the file, and now in the console is our document, and it's laid out in nice XML format. So let me pass that data along to a new function called build model. I can use the query selector function to get the vertices and the triangles. This will probably be easiest to deal with if I just put it into my own array structure. So let me just go and load everything using a for loop. If we loop through all the children, we get attribute X, attribute Y, and attribute Z. We can just push it to our own array of vertices like so. I can practically copy paste this for the triangles. Just instead of X, Y, Z, it has V1, V2, and V3. Let me check if this works by putting in a breakpoint at the end of the code. Those are our vertices. And then here's our triangles. Actually, these are all strings, so I want to convert these to numbers. So I'm just going to surround everything with number. So great, now I can just move this input over to the 3D file. I dropped it above the canvas and I added a class to it, so that way I can make the position fixed. That way it doesn't add a white space at the top of the screen and a scroll bar on the side by pushing the canvas down. And I can go and drop in these load and build model functions too. Though I'm now gonna get rid of the vertices and the triangles and I'm gonna make that global. Also, I feel like I shouldn't have something called vertices because I already have something called vertices in this code. So I'm just gonna call it load vertices and load triangles. And I apparently have a draw 3D quad function but not a draw 3D triangle. So I feel like I should have that. Because I built my engine around quadrilaterals instead of triangles, I have to go and duplicate a vertice, and then I just feed that into the draw 3D quad function after that. So when painting the screen, I'm just gonna add a new function here, draw loaded triangles, and that will go through all the vertices and triangles and it will make all these. So we go and loop through the triangles. Try is just an array of the IDs of the vertices that we're gonna use. So I'm just gonna make a new array poly, which will have the complete information. Try zero is an index to one of the vertices. So if I look at my load vertices, I can put try zero in here and that would be the vertex. Say poly.push around this vertex. And at the end of that poly should be a drawable triangle. So I can just pass that to the newly created draw 3D try function and just give it poly. Oh, there's my box right here. Okay, yeah, it's colliding through the wall. Let me move it slightly. So I'll have it taken an offset array. I will just add the offset array. Maybe I want 500, zero, 500, and that'll get it out of the house. Where'd it go? Where is it? So take out load vertices here. I called offset V because it's gonna be V with the offset included, and I could just push it, but now we have to change the individual values of each. So yay, another for loop. Okay, so something like this should displace the value, I think. That's still not where I want it to be. Yeah, let's go negative 500 maybe. 
And there it is, now the prism's behind everything. But it's not the right color, because I never actually did anything with the color information. So how do I actually go about getting the color information here? Well, there's a base material, and the base material has a display color. So if I want to grab the color, I can do it like this. Just say that the load color is equal to the attribute display color of the base. Of course, once you have two colors, this immediately breaks. So let's just make the fill style be equal to load color and see what happens. Oh, look at that. It actually was able to interpret it. Let me draw a slightly more complicated object and see how that works out. There, here's an object. I don't know what this is, but it's something. So if I go into a thing and I open the model, let's see what we get. It only drew the first one of these. So it's not drawing the whole model, so let's see what I did wrong. Each model has its own set of vertices and triangles. So now I have to get all the groups of vertices and all the groups of triangles. So I'll do query selector all on the object first. So right, it's like Query Selector, but Query Selector all actually returns a list of things. And basically I'm just going to iterate through that list. So yeah, just, um, I guess I'll nest what I have before, like so, and then I just need to replace where I talk about XML, I need to replace that with the object. So it'd be obj xml ob dot query selector. I'm getting the sub object of all of these. I'm just going to move load color out up to here. So, okay, instead of pushing onto load vertices and load triangles, I probably want to push onto object vertices and object triangles. At the end of this loop, I can push them onto a larger array. Then I need to declare these arrays now. So I'll do that up here and make it an empty array. That array gets pushed onto the loaded vertices and triangles. But then when we go about drawing them, we can't just loop through the loaded triangles anymore. Instead, we have to make this loop even more complicated. Right, so change the inner to obj triangles, load triangles, ob. And do the same thing with the vertices. Okay, so now that I found and replaced everything, will this work? So it did work, but I didn't take the transforms into account, so it didn't actually draw it properly. The reason why the objects are all centered on the same spot is because I didn't multiply the coordinates by the numbers in each object's transform. So whatever, we have to just do some matrix multiplication. Which is fun, and by fun I mean it's math, and math is not fun, so it's not fun. And this transformation here is not in a matrix, it's all in uh, just a single line. So I have to figure out like what they actually meant by putting all these numbers in a row. Now here's the spec. So according to this spec here, this is how you'd write this line as a matrix. So now that I have the 4x4 transform matrix, what do I actually do with it? Good question. Does this say? Mm, not really. Alright, I see. X, Y, Z, one. Great, so we can do that, right? You know, you just go X times this guy plus Y times this guy plus Z times this guy, one times this guy, and you add them all up, and then you have a new X and a new Y and a new Z and a new one. So I just need to like program that, I think. I have to grab the transforms. Okay, yes, yeah, so you'd get it like that, and then I'd split it on spaces. Well, let me copy this line that I wrote here. Let me just loop through the transform and turn everything into a number first. So I wrote the indices of each of those numbers next to their number on this paint up here. And now I just have to do some multiplication. Okay, so I think that's the transformed x value, and then I just repeat for y and z. So that should maybe transform the coordinates? I don't know. Where did it go? It's not here. Maybe that's why you can't see anything right now, because the values are just tiny. By multiplying this by 0.001, the object is actually ending up about one one thousandth of the size as before. So maybe to correct for that, when I take in an offset, it should be x, y, z, and scalar values. So let me scale it by a thousand. So now before adding the offset, we multiply by the offset's scalar. Does that fix this yet? Is this visible yet? Oh yeah, look at that. Okay, it, so it is the right shape, it's just not like standing upright. And it's clipping through the house, so that's causing some bugs to happen. I think to fix this, I have to do like more matrix multiplication. So I think I want to rotate this 90 degrees on the x-axis, and then 180 on the y. So I have to math again. Ugh, let me define some rotations here, which I convert from degrees into radians. Yeah, so when I write this out, first I say x times 0, which is 0, so I don't care about it, y times cosine theta, y is rv1, multiply that by cosine of theta, so since we're doing the x rotation, that's 0, and then add z multiplied by sine of theta. Okay, so that should be the x rotation. I'll do the y rotation. I'm just going to refer to how it's listed here on this website. First, I do x times cosine 
of the y's theta, and I add that to z multiplied by math.sine of that same angle again. Uh, okay, that should be the y rotation. Hopefully I didn't mess that up. And lastly, the z rotation. Oh, the z rotation is actually slightly different. The negative sign comes early. Why is that? I don't know. Doing a few more multiplications should allow us to rotate. And, uh, oh, nope, nope, I think I did something wrong. What if I just, like, don't rotate it anything? Does it still break then? Yeah, actually it does. The whole thing becomes flattened. I think I know what's happening. I'm changing the value of the thing and then using the new value of it. Oh, make sure that you're not changing the variables in the middle of your operation. Okay, this should work. This should actually work this time. There, that's what I drew. And that's, that's it being graphed. All right, let me move it down a little bit. There. Okay, yeah, that's what I drew. That's it being rendered in my glorious 3D engine. Which, no, don't tell me that something broke. Don't tell me that there's stuff breaking. Don't, no, 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 no. <laughs> All right, well, you know what? Let's try loading a more complicated object and just see how badly my program handles it. How about this dog? Wow, that looks way too advanced. Can I have a low poly version of this, please? This model is just way too much for me. All right, well, let's just see what happens. Let's try importing the fish. I'm scared. Wait a minute, what? How does this load in perfectly? I mean, there's a little bit of slowdown, but it's, it, it, it looks perfect. I can't believe this actually works. How many polygons is this? There's gotta be a lot of polygons. Oh, whoa. Whoa. Okay, look how many triangles. There's so many triangles. Okay, yeah, I was actually just drawing like 2,000 polygons right there. And it was, it was handling it, which is kind of cool.